everybody. Good morning to you. It is six in the morning right now. What am I doing up so early? Well, I've got a very busy work day ahead of me. So I wanted to do some Chantal content and get it out of the way before I do other work off of YouTube. So while I was asleep, Chantal posted a video and she did a live. And even though the thumbnail for the live features a bunch of food, I scan through it and she's not eating all the way through. So I will be covering that here. And then after this, I'm going to check out the vlog where I guess she went to a market and she was essentially walking around. I just took a, took a quick peek at it. She looked really awkward, like she didn't know what to do. Just a lot of standing around, a lot of sitting around and just looking out of place. But I wanted to go over her live. Uh, I'm going to cut out a big portion of her live where she's eating. Don't worry, there's still a, enough to react to. And also include a tidbit from uh, Life in Vibe. And again, I thoroughly apologize for getting your channel name wrong, Vibe. I am so sorry about that. Life in Vibe, not Life of Vibe, uh, where she talks about Chantal and how because she's doing reacts to Chantal's videos and giving her professional opinions and thoughts about what's going on, the Beezers have been coming after her. Of course they do. Of course they're going to come after her because she's speaking out and saying her true, honest, professional thoughts about their queen. Now, Chantal, she's gone back to the triggering content. And why is she doing it? Because that's what makes her money. You know, it's, that's always what's made her the most money. Sit down, eat a meal, attract the food fetish people to her channel. They come to her channel. They back her up. They enable her. They praise her. They, you know, urge her on. And so she's all about pleasing that subset of, of her audience versus the larger group of people. They just want to see her get healthy. But it's amazing to me watching her live that even though she's doing content that really she shouldn't be doing, despite the fact that she's come on camera talking about all her health problems and going to the doctor and being on three different kinds of diabetic medication, her audience is not calling her out, not all the way out. There's no outrage. And if there is, it's outrage that she hides courtesy of having all of her comments now held for review. So you watch her live, a large part of her audience are just standing there like not saying anything in protest. Listen, uh, I, I made a short video telling you guys that I'm not going to react to any more of her mukbangs. I can't do it. I won't do it. Listen, I'm somebody that I've dealt with problems with food. It is the worst kind of experience. It took me six years to deal with it. How can I, in good conscience, having gone through that, react to a video with someone actively, publicly having a bee moment? Because that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. If Chantal is sitting down eating a portion equal to say four or six people, how can I show that to you guys? Any other content that she does where food is not involved or not in sight, I will react to, but I am not going to show her having a B moment. And the last two videos were nothing but B moments. In fact, her latest one, the pop high one, that was straight up a B moment. That was. And I'm just like, uh, no, I'll pass. Thank you very much. So yeah, not doing that. No, like I, I don't even know if I want to do a recap of that one. Like, what's the point? Chantal is sitting there eating the food and she's talking about nothing just having a B moment with herself. I think her and Salah have made the decision that they're just going to go for it, that she's just going to cater exclusively to that group in her audience that likes the food. That's why she's not uncomfortable anymore with being shown on camera, like her full body shots. Remember how the full body shots used to make her uncomfortable? Now suddenly she's completely okay with it. She wants people to see her getting bigger and bigger and bigger. She wants people to see her eating food. Like, you got to wonder why she's doing all of that. She really wants that money. And she doesn't care how she has to get it, even if it means destroying that last little 1% of her health that's left. So, yeah, I'm going to go over her live and I'm going to give my thoughts. Before we get into that, though, Life in Vibe uh, did a video. She was reacting to Chantal's video. And there are some thoughts here that I'd like to capture 
before Chantal's live. And please do keep in mind that Life in Vibe is a cardiac RN. It's a very important job. She's a professional lady in the medical field. She's gotten all kinds of training. She's still getting training. She's still taking classes which is normal. Like if you are a medical professional, you're always wanting to learn more. You're always wanting to increase your education. So very educated professional lady is life and vibe. And she just comes on camera giving her thoughts about Chantal. And I certainly appreciate it. And I appreciate her because we're always welcoming new perspectives here in girl world. We always want to hear from new people. It's always nice to have a fresh set of eyes giving us a different angle. We love that. So I appreciate you, Life in Vibe. And I would like to give her thoughts right here and what's been going on with her. So let me just go ahead and pull her up briefly. And uh, I will leave a link for her original video in the description if you guys want to go over there. Check her out. Give her a sub. Give her a like. Give her some engagement. Really enjoy her content. I certainly encourage that. And it's so nice to see that her channel has grown a bit. Uh, she was at 500 something the last time I checked. Now she's at 800. She talks about how she's now in the YouTube partner program. I think that's fabulous. Well done. Brilliant life. Brilliant. But let me just go ahead and shut up and, and let her talk. <laughs> she's a very entertaining person when she speaks. So hold on a second. I need to get back over here. All right. Are we, are we here? Yeah, we're here. All right, let's go. Hi. And, uh, I was saying, if anybody's been watching any of my content, then you probably know that I'm going to be probably burying my head in my hands by the end of this video. Uh, and anyway, I want to get a little bit of business out of the way uh, before I get into the video. So if you want to skip ahead and see to the reaction, please feel free to do that instead of just like clicking out. Go watch me be salty because I get really salty when I watch Chantel. Anyway, um, I'm... Don't ever feel bad about that if you get salty. You're just being honest. We appreciate honesty in girl world. Honesty is something that Chantal won't give us ever. She constantly lies. But we do love two things about Chantal life. She lies, but then she tells on herself. Always. <laughs> she lies and then she tells. She ta she's, her, she's her worst tattletale. She does. But it's hard to not get salty at Chantal. She purposely does things to get people salty and elicit that negative response and those negative emotions. She doesn't do positive content. So salty is appropriate. I'm a cardiac RN here in the United States. I work currently at a cardiac rehab. I am grad school training to be a nurse practitioner specializing in acute care adult gerontology. So I do use some of my medical knowledge, obviously, to make commentary to Chantel's content. Um, I do want to try to always promote good, healthy eating habits. And so when I see uh, content that I think is misinformation, uh, especially using the word healthy, along with this chicken pot pie, um, I think is really bad. So this is why I'm here, part of the reason. Uh, I wanted to thank all the new subs who have come along to the channel. We've gotten to like over 700 now, and I cannot thank you enough for just showing such great support in the past week. I've really just been so excited. It really is an exciting feeling to see a channel suddenly grow and to have such great um, comments, and I've been trying to engage with people, so I've been really enjoying that as well, so thank you so much. I have also been officially accepted into the YouTube partnership program. So that has been, you know, great. So um, that came really fast. I hear sometimes it could take months. It didn't even get, take a week for my channel to be accepted into the program. So um, that was really exciting. So thank you so much to YouTube for that too. Congratulations on that life. I think that's fantastic. Well done, madam. Um, I wanted to thank two content creators specifically for encouraging their viewers and subscribers to come over and check out my channel. Uh, first, it's at Rose Thorn Reacts, and she did a reaction to my uh, video of me reacting to Chantel um, and that uh, um, grocery haul <laughs> that she had that I really didn't appreciate. You're welcome, sweetie. And listen, I am, listen, I'm a content creator. I have a channel, but I'm always happy to point 
people on my channel in the direction of any other channels that they might find entertaining, that they might find knowledgeable. Certainly you are knowledgeable. So I am happy to direct people your way. Like you are a professional. You are a medical professional. Chantal likes to yell and scream. You guys aren't doctors. You don't know what you're talking about. And then there's you. You are a medical professional. You do know what you're talking about. You do have experience in the medical field. Lots of experience, lots of knowledge, lots of it. How can you argue against somebody who is educated and knowledgeable and has gone to school and taken classes? You absolutely can't. <laughs> and I love that. I love the fact that you are such a smart, educated, intelligent lady. And you're telling it like it is. She can't argue against it. Her beezers that support her can't argue against it. I know they've been coming at you and giving you a hard time and calling you names. That, that's part of the course for the people that are hardcore supporters of Chantal. They go after anybody that speaks against Chantal and her behavior. At the same time, they're supporting behavior that she does that is harmful to herself. They just go along with anything. She comes on camera, says all these things about her health problems, says how she, uh, chick, what is chick? <laughs> says how sick she is. And then she comes on camera after that, eating a pot pie the size of a casserole. Not a word. Crickets. Absolute crickets. So I say keep speaking your truth. Just keep speaking it. She needs to hear it. Everybody else needs to hear it too. And that I suddenly found out. Uh, somebody made a comment and I suddenly realized. And then I uh, had another channel, Are You Serious?, and she is, I've been like lurking in the chat, I guess, but just chiming in. And uh, anyway, she's recognized me on her channel. A lot of her uh, subscribers uh, have come over and subbed over to our channel here. And so I really appreciate that. So I'm trying to make this quick. But anyway, the links to their channels are down below. Chantel did a live uh, recently uh, and her visas and her have put me on their radar. They've called me the annoying uh, nurse. Uh, they then said that I was cosplaying in scrubs because obviously, you know, I got nothing better to do. Imagine that. Imagine the Beezers trying to call out somebody for cosplaying anything. Meanwhile, Chantal is over in Kuwait cosplaying and pretending to be a Muslim woman. Imagine that. Imagine Beezers who watch somebody put on a uh, hijab and a uh, abaya pretending to be Muslim. At the same time, she's committing gluttony, which is haram. She's smoking. She's cursing. She's gossiping. She's doing all these things she really shouldn't be doing if she were a Muslim woman who wanted to, you know, adhere to the faith. Uh, she's cosplaying all over the place. And then trying to say about you, oh, you're cosplaying as a nurse and calling you a fake nurse. And I love the fact that you posted your license. <laughs> well played. Well played. Like, shut them all up. You know, you, you pulled the Uno reverse card. Oh, you want to call me a fake nurse? Receipts. Receipts. Can't argue against receipts. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> when I need to be actually working on a paper, um, and uh, which I really I will be, and uh, mention that you know I must not really be a nurse. So anyway, I did post a copy of my. You know they say like you're not really a nurse, but here Chantal on her channel. What the the heck does she do? She gets on her channel acting like she knows everything about everything. She turns into Doctor Armchair, or as it were Doctor Blue Couch, which now became Doctor Beige Couch with all this knowledge about health and coming to the camera and talking about BED recovery, even though she's not in recovery, she has not done the work. She's nowhere near recovery. And in my opinion, her talking like that is a direct slap in the face to anyone who's done the work and they are in recovery. But talking like she's an expert in anything and concerning the fact that she's over 500 pounds and incredibly sick, she shouldn't be giving any kind of health advice, nutrition advice, medical advice to anybody. She's spreading a lot of misinformation over there. Yeah, cosplaying as a Muslim woman, 
cosplaying as a professional or an expert in health when clearly she isn't. But downplaying you because you are a true professional. I license because it is public uh, information here in the United States. And so, yeah, that, I hope that squelches uh, that particular thought. Anyway, uh, it was just funny. So I know that uh, Chantelle's watching me. She knows Of course she is. Mama, you're on the radar now. You're gonna be you're gonna be forever on the radar. You are. Like what once she gets wind of you, you're on the radar. She's gonna be keeping an eye on you. And more than likely, she's going to be watching your content. And please be on the lookout for the fake stock accounts. She's got God, hundreds of those. Look out for the account Charles Reed. Yeah, that one's everywhere. She likes to post under Charles Reed. I did a tarot reading of Chantal and she was posting under that account and another one. Like you talk about Chantal and you say anything against her, against what she's doing, even though what she's doing is wrong. She'll, she'll, she won't ever come in under foodie beauty. It's under Charles Reed because she wants to be nasty. And yet she doesn't want anything bad to happen to her channel. She's always looking out for her channel and the money she makes. But she wants to be nasty. So she'll do it under a sock account. So if something happens to the sock account, no harm, no foul. But yeah, look out for them sock accounts, mama. That's Chantal. As I try to promote her eating healthfully. Um, and uh, the only person that gets spited when they don't eat very well is the person who's consuming the food, not the person making the recommendations to eat a healthier diet. So anyway, uh, if you do like this type of content, that was a long introduction, but I just wanted to get that. I usually won't do so long. Um, but anyway, if you do like this type of content, hit the likes, hit the subscribe, comment, and let's just get into Chantel's uh, healthy chicken pot pie. And y'all are about to see why in a second, why I'm not doing like a normal reaction to this video. Y'all will see in a second. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> Hello. Right there. Look at it. Look at the smaller picture of Chantal, what she's got in front of her. That's her idea of a pot pie. A pot pie, this, uh, that it's, it's an entire casserole dish. That's a hubcap of a pot pie. She's having a bee moment, disguising it as a meal. And she does that with YouTube. She likes to play with words. Look for the words that YouTube will not uh, yellow dollar sign her for or red dollar sign her for. She doesn't want to uh, have limited monetization. She doesn't want her content to be age restricted. Although life and vibe says here, it should come, her content should come with trigger warnings and I agree. But if she put trigger warnings on her videos, that would also mean that it would be age restricted or restricted in some way and she would lose monetization. So she tries to be all kinds of sneaky and say, this is my meal. I'm just eating a normal meal. I'm eating just one pot pie. Yeah, a pot pie the size of Oregon. Should anybody be eating a pot pie the size of a state? No, absolutely not. Chantal has said, food does not go to waste in my house. So that means that entire pot pie got eaten at some point. She'll eat a little bit on camera, act like, oh, I'm just not going to eat the rest of this. Oh, yeah? What about off camera, though? That whole thing got eaten. Ridiculous. I mean, me and four other people couldn't finish that thing. No way. Like, I have said, if you have a problem with food, best thing you can do is get out of the house. Don't have it near you. If it's in the house and you can't eat it, you will eat it. So here she is with a hubcap full of food. She's going to eat it. She will. She'll consume that whole doggone thing and clock the uh, jar of what is that? Whatever that is. So that too. <laughs> none of that is good for her. And none of her stupid beezers called her out for it. None of them got mad. None of them realized what she's doing to her health and, and they're not going to do anything. They're just going to go along with it. Well, it's her hospital visit, I guess. 
I'm super hungry, so I'm going to say bismillah and dig right in. You know what? I don't care if you are super hungry. You shouldn't be eating like that. And if you had any kind of decency, if you had any kind of respect, you, you have you have nerve, Chantal. Let me just go. Let me just go off for a minute, y'all. Let me just go all the way off. You got nerve, madam. You got real nerve. You're not interested in treating your BED. You're not interested in your treatment. You're not interested in your recovery. You're interested in monetizing the subject of BED. What you're doing is highly disrespectful. It's a slap in the face to anyone who's ever had to deal with ED. It's a horrible experience. It's the worst kind of purgatory because you have a problem with something that you can't stop consuming. It's the worst. Lots of other things you can do without food you can't do without. So how do you fix a problem with something that you can't stop consuming? That's a trick. That is an absolute trick. That I struggled with that for years. But coming on camera, making it a joke, making it seem like it's a joke, like it's no big deal. It's not that serious. It is serious. It affects people's lives. It sometimes takes people's lives. It's horrible. Horrible. And you're making it a joke. And you make a point to put tags on your videos to signal the feedy people to come on over. But you also put tags on your videos that you're trying to get into different algorithms, the health algorithm, the BED recovery algorithm, talking about B eating. You're grabbing at anybody and everybody. You have no respect for the community on YouTube that they dealt with eating issues or addiction issues. You want to profit off your own addiction. And also, if we're going to be honest, you want to profit off of the pains and suffering of other people. You want them to come on your channel and get all the way triggered. Or if they're not in recovery and they're still doing the food by watching you, they're going to think, oh, this is OK. No, it's not OK. It's not. It's absolutely not. I don't know why YouTube doesn't step up and do something about this. They have rules. Why aren't they enforcing them? Like, what is going on here? You can't tell me that someone at the YouTube office would look at this and go, oh, this is a normal meal. No problem. We can monetize this all the way. No one would think this is a normal meal. Nobody. No one. Nobody. Nowhere. Insane. Okay. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm only I'm here only on uh, Life in Vibes video because she says something that I want to capture. I'm not here for Chantal's mukbang. I don't want to see this. This is gross. This is wrong. Don't want it. But she says something about the feedy community that I want to capture here because she is a professional and she's giving her professional opinion. And after she says it, we're out. So let's go. <laughs> Look at this crust here. Am I? As you can see, <laughs> I I'm just don't even know what to say. Hot, hot. It just started. <laughs> Yeah, you can't tell me that a person who has a problem with food, eating a pot pie out of a dish the size of a casserole, and not only that, clock the serving spoon she's eating with, not even a normal spoon, eating with a serving spoon. Excuse me? A serving spoon is to grab something out of a dish and put it on a plate. Why do you need a serving spoon? You know why she uses a serving spoon? Because that means she can put more in her mouth. Yeah, she's got a problem with food, big time. She needs inpatient. She needs it. Lockdown, restricted inpatient where she can't sneak eat. She can't get anything. She does not need to be on YouTube and turn her YouTube channel into her own personal monthly GoFundMe looking to feed her addictions. No, not cool. Ow. Oh, my God. I just, this, this, this is, this is insane. Yep. I mean, seriously. I mean, we all know it's ridiculous. I really don't know how else to describe it. It doesn't matter what type of flour was used to make that crust. No. Nope. It doesn't matter. The fact that you made a pie that large to begin with, yep. which it looks like for a family of 15. Right. And then you're just eating straight out of the, the pan. 
shows obviously no portion control, no calorie control, her diabetes. I mean, just just like yeah. Well, her idea of portion control is how much she can stuff in her stomach before she absolutely cannot eat another bite. That's her idea of portion control life. I mean, if she made that pot pie, she could have made like a smaller size and then put some on a plate with some uh, vegetables, whatever else. And that would have been a meal. But that is her meal. That pot pie is her meal. And that casserole dish is her plate. This is her normal. This has been her normal. Like she is so gunning for being bed bound within six months. It's ridiculous. I don't know why anybody would willingly knowingly choose to be bed bound just give up their mobility but she does and youtube they could stop this they could if they wanted to they could cut off the money faucet and she would have to at least slow down with this crap but she's not f you the diabetes she don't care at this point and that toe she stubbed and by the way while we're here what happened to the unicity wasn't she toting the effects of unicity? It tastes so good. And you're supposed to drink this 15 minutes before the meal. Um, looks like it's a product that doesn't work. <laughs> I guess the unicity doesn't work. I guess nobody should be buying it. If she drank the unicity, and then she's going to sit down to an entire casserole dish full of pot pie. Okay. I guess that's a fail. Did not work for her is a goner it's a goner and she will never tell anybody but i can promise you if she really stumped it badly and she probably can't really see her feet and her diabetes with her blood sugars as high as they are they're not even recommended to trim their own toenails because they cannot feel if they have potentially you know accidentally cut their toe instead of the toenail yeah like I, i've heard that that that's a thing with those who are diabetic like whatever wound you get is slow to heal i did hear that from several people that if you're a diabetic any wound is slow to heal if y'all remember all the way back those that have been around long enough remember when Chantel had to get like a boil or something removed that wound took forever to heal and she's not a clean person she doesn't she's not on top of her hygiene and her health which means that whatever wound she gets in her body is open up perhaps to infection. So she's a diabetic and she can't even safely trim her own toenails. If she got infection in her foot, that could become uh, rather serious. But it, Chantal, you've gotten yourself to a place where you, you're not supposed to be trimming your own toenails. You eat, and yet you eat the Popeye. And so it's really dangerous for diabetics. And so, I mean, you'll be seeing Chantella hobbling soon, but this is just stupid. It's just, you know, she obviously just really dislikes herself. You know, I'm, I'm glad I'm not one of her care providers because I'm just gonna watch this, but there's very little at this point. We're just gonna watch and I'm just gonna look horrified for probably about 17 minutes as this woman destroys, you know. Again, I'm not here for Chantal's mud bomb. I am here for life's commentary because she says something important here and I want to capture it with the live and the stuff on Twitter. So we're going to stay here long enough. And again, I will leave live's video link in the description. And if you guys like what she's saying and I like it, uh, if you really like it, give her a sub, give her a like and, you know, like, let's let's let her know. We enjoy her commentary. We appreciate her insight because I certainly do. Let's go. You know, her heart, her kidneys, her pancreas. I mean, I can't even think of the all the colon. I mean, I hope she's getting a colonoscopy, Chantel. I'm recommending you're at the age that the US Preventative Services Task Force recommends to get a colonoscopy. She was supposed to actually get one a long time ago, life. She was supposed to go in one. Uh, I believe she had a bout of C. diff. Uh, there's so many things that have happened with Chantal. Like it's hard to keep track of them all. Honestly, it's been so long. <laughs> but she had something happen, and she's supposed to get a fecal transplant because I guess she didn't have any healthy bacteria in her gut. I guess she destroyed the bacteria in her gut. But she actually was supposed to go for colonoscopy. Colonoscopy. Did I say that right? 
but she was supposed to go for one of those and she never went. And I suspect, even though I'm not a doctor, so if I'm getting some information here wrong, please excuse me and I'm sorry. But I know that part of getting that done is you can't eat. Like it's, it's got to be clean down there. And so she wasn't willing to do that. So she never went. Just saying. Hey, look at the chicken. Mm. Gross. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Sorry. Sorry. You need to open a restaurant. No, you don't. No. I make the best pop, huh? No, you don't. I just, I didn't. Now. There's so much I can't say. My pie crust? I want to say. Please don't follow us. Any. So if you're wondering, like, what am I waiting for life to say? She talks about the feedy community. That's what I'm waiting for. Like, I'm. I'm totally not even looking at Chantal eating. I don't want to. I just go away. Can I cover up that part of the screen? Go away. Anything. This Oil. is not healthy. I'm not ugh. butter. Okay, I'm just gonna skip. Thank you for stopping the video. Along after I kind of put out a couple of like health trigger warnings out here, or any trigger warnings for anybody with any type of eating disorder, because we always know that Chantal never trigger warning. She never puts out a trigger warning to nope. her content. Which I think YouTube really seriously needs to have her put out a trigger warning. Yep. Because she is just feeding into every type of fetish that goes along with this type of feeding community. That part, that was the part I was waiting for. I said that. I'm not a medical professional but I've had issues with food and I know all about those communities. That's why I've been clocking it and talking to you guys about it and letting you know what's going on here. But here is a medical professional, a professional cardiac RN nurse. Even she's clocking it. She's calling it out. She's saying it. I told y'all like her content is strictly about the feeding people. If you can go back through her content the last four or five years, it's all about the food. It's always been about the food. Does Chantal have an obsession with food? Of course. But she got on YouTube and she was looking for those people with that interest because those are the ones who subbed up to her and would back her up on her obsession and encourage it. They'd be like little cheerleaders. Wah, rah, go Chantal. Catering to the feedy people. And there are many examples of her catering to them. Let me give you guys a few. So a long time ago, one of her feedy people, he had this thing where he didn't like the sound of metal spoons and forks hitting the plate. So he sent her an oversized wooden spoon and wooden fork that she would use in her videos. Yeah, that came from a feedy. She talked often about how some of the feedy people, they would often buy her food. They buy her meals. Remember the Lakma fairy? Some of her feedies would send her clothes in, through Amazon. They buy her clothes, they buy her food. Uh, there were many instances where I clocked that Chantal, in my opinion, was doing the feedy requests on camera. And this is how she was doing it. I'm sure she was talking to those people off of YouTube they would pay to watch her eat certain things. So she might do custom content for those people and then turn around and double dip and put those videos on YouTube and make money both ways. Also, a little interesting uh, tidbit for you. Did y'all know? Are you aware of the fact that Chantal got busted on a feedy site catering to that fetish? She had a profile there. And as soon as she got busted, she took that profile down. One more thing. Uh, one of her feedies actually came into her chat, sent her a super chat saying, thanks for the talk last night. She immediately deleted that super chat. Yeah. So she's all up in it. All up in it. Turning her channel into a fetish channel. As many fetishes as possible. She could go on a, say, adult site or adult forum that specializes in those fetishes and make money there. That, that's the way it should be done, truly. Like, considering the, the, how triggering this content is, that's what she should be doing. It would be more respectful, 
But I'll tell you why I think Chantal doesn't do that. Because if, if she went on, say, only hands to do content, that would mean she would have to promote her channel or promote her page. Because when you pull up only hands, you don't see a bunch of pages. You have to know exactly who you're looking for. It's not public like YouTube is. On, say, only hands, there's more competition. There's more people doing the same kind of content. On YouTube, there's not as much competition. Chantal does not like competition. So she came on YouTube, but there isn't as much competition. And it's fully public. There's more people looking at her. There's more people that can subscribe to her. That's why she does it. She's always said, I will do my content here eating because it's easy. You just sit down, eat a meal, turn on your camera, post it, done. And that's why she's sticking to this formula because it's easy content. No thought involved. Just get a meal, eat it, be done, be full, and go home or go to bed. But even a professional here saying she need, she sees it, she clocks it. Yeah, fetish stuff. YouTube should not allow this. And she has it publicly out here on YouTube. And it's becoming extremely problematic. And along with her, you know, potential, what seems to be an undiagnosed, I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist, Maybe but there's okay. definitely some personality disorders that Chantel needs to have addressed. And I agree with that. And I am also not a doctor. I think there might be some issues here, some deep issues. But here's the problem, life. In a word, in a simple word, Chantal is living the toxic addict dream. She is an addict of food. And being an addict of food, and somebody's obsessed with food, she has found a public forum where she created a page and she can surround herself with like-minded people who back up that addiction, encourage that addiction, enable that addiction. She's found a forum where she can have an endless supply of money, never run out and keep this obsession going. And even though I'm sure she looks in the mirror and she knows how unhealthy she is, she doesn't care because she's got that toxic safety net underneath her that keeps her from hitting the ground. And so this will continue until it can't continue anymore. And her personality disorders are manifesting themselves out here in the YouTube verse. And it's getting really, really dangerous. And I think that anybody who follows her content or feels that she really is somebody that is taking anybody on a healthy journey, I just, I find that really sad. This is sad. This is somebody who is under a filter. I don't have any filters. I've got a ring light, but I don't. This is also my opinion life. In the beginning of her channel, there was a person. There was Chantal Marie Soreau. But Chantal Marie Soreau wanted to be somebody. She wanted to be important. So she wanted onto YouTube. And when she started doing the eating videos, because at that time, the mukbang thing was the craze. It was the trend. She followed the trend, even though she shouldn't have. But she got on that train and, and people came to know of her. Over the course of time, the person, Chantal Marie, started to slowly disappear. And the persona, Foodie Beauty, took over. Like she poured everything into this persona. And, and Foodie Beauty, the persona has everything that the person Chantal Marie does not. While Chantal Marie, the person is alone, has no one to talk to, it feels awkward about herself, does not get attention. Foodie Beauty, the persona, could turn on her camera, do a live anytime and have people talking to her, giving her praise, making her feel good. So she just shoved the actual person and all their problems out of camera view and it's all about the persona. The persona has taken over. And so when it comes to her health problems, like that's Chantal Marie's problem, not Foodie Beauty's problem. Like she has, she lost the plot. She absolutely lost the plot by 
being an actor that stays on stage all the time and doesn't want to get off and put on their street clothes and go live. Have a definite line between the YouTube stuff and the not YouTube stuff. Like balance them out. She lost herself. She lost touch to herself. And now she's all about, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go nuts on camera with the food. I don't care if it triggers people. I don't care if it's wrong. I just care if I make money with it. <laughs> That's where she's at. I don't have any filters. I barely have any makeup on. She can call me names. That's kind of where she goes when she... Eh. Coming from foodie, it's not worth much. ...feels that anybody is challenging her, and that usually is a very um, indicate sign of somebody who is not very mature and who really does not have any ability to uh, debate someone let's okay you know what I hate to stop you here uh, life so sorry ma'am it, it's a brilliant video but I did make a promise to my subs like no reviewing Chantal's mukbangs I'm keeping it but your commentary is brilliant I will leave a link for your video in the description for anybody who doesn't know about your channel and they want to go watch you directly I certainly encourage that, but we got to move on to the Twitter stuff and then her life. So thank you for your thoughts, for your brilliant commentary as always, but I got to go on to the Twitter stuff and everybody go check her out. So let's just stop here and go on over to Twitter because I got I just got a few things to show y'all. All right. And hold on a second. Let me just turn off the heater. It's, it's right next to me. I'm cooking. I'm sweating. Okay, we don't need all that heat. The little heater, it just so it does so well. And it's like, oh, I'm sweat. I'm I'm ish. I'm sweating. Eh. All right. So we're gonna move on to the Twitter stuff. All right. Just a few things. We won't stay here long. We'll move on to the live, and we're cutting that live down by a lot. I refuse to watch her eat. I blah blah blah. The one thing I've noted about Chantal's lives. The first 15 minutes or so is just her talking and waiting for people to show up. Then she starts talking. See, I know your patterns, Foodie. I've been reacting to you too long. All right. So let's start here with courtesy of that's Lindsay with an A. And the shot on the left is from the outside vlog that she did where she looked awkward. And the right one is from the pot pie food video. Uh, Lindsay says, so Foodie wore this hoodie all day, walking for hours, sweating and panting animals, then took it off to cook and put it back on to eat. Who puts on a sweat soaked, covered in farm animal stench hoodie back on to eat? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, I've worked out before. I worked out hard. When you're done, your clothes are, you're, you, need, you need a shower and you need fresh clothes. So she was out all day in the sunshine, sweating. When she came home, why didn't she put on, why didn't she bathe herself? Why not put on fresh clothes? You're going to be wearing clothes that are covered in sweat while you're cooking. How can that be comfortable? That sounds rather yucky. That sounds actually kind of gross, but that's foodie. By the way, foodie, you might want to watch that. If, if you're someone and you're wearing dirty nasty clothes you as a diabetic like if you got any kind of scratch or anything like if you're not bathing yourself diabetic wounds are are slow to heal like that's just bad for your skin that's horrible all right here's another shot from the pot pie uh mukbang here's another reason why i'm not showing it look she's eating with her hands feral beast where's your fork like i'm i'm not showing this no, no, I'm not. I, I'm not going to sit there and review a video of a woman eating like an, a, an animal with her hands and having a bee moment. No, I'm not. No, we're not doing this. Uh, shenanigan says, uh, shenanigan says, what can, can I say that everyone else or most of us isn't already thinking? Chantal has been outed as the animal blanker, and now she's entertaining the thought of not fixing her pet because she wants kittens. Excuse me? What? Well, I'm confused. 
help me out here. Look, I know that Julia is not fixed, which is not good for Julia. She's got the money. She should fix Julia. But usually when you get kittens, it's because you have a unfixed male come in contact with an unfixed female and she's in estrus. She's going through her heat and she's queening. So if Julia is in the house by herself, how is she going to get pregnant? Is this going to be an immaculate conception? Where is the Tom coming in? Is she going to get a Tom cat? Chantal, you don't need kittens. Don't be one of those doggone people that you want kittens. I want kittens because they're so cute. Yeah, and they're a lot of work. Kittens become full grown cats. You're not even taking care of Julia. What would you do with like, say, five or six cats in the house? Don't do it. Don't be stupid and don't do it. But how is she going to get pregnant with no Tom around? You know, it takes a male and a female. Okay, this is from the live, courtesy of shenanigans, saying for anyone who is curious as to whether Chantal continues to eat after her mukbangs. Okay, let's watch the clip. Do I have pot pie left? Yes, I do. Although I will admit when I turn the camera off, I snuck a few more bites. I'm not going to lie. Of course you do. Because you've already told us food does not go to waste in your house. And I did watch part of your mukbang, you know, away from my react. I peeked at it just to see how bad it was. That whole casserole dish, you ate almost half of it. Half of a casserole dish. Half. But I love how you tell on yourself, please, we, we enjoy those moments. I snuck a few more bites. How big were the bites? You ate another half? Even if you just ate a few more bites, because it's there in the house, she's going to eat the rest of it. So an entire casserole, did, oh, ay, 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 ay. Let's go. But I do have a, quite a bit left. So later I'll have some. Yeah. So like she, she's telling on herself again. So during the mukbang video, she ate a good portion of it. And then after the video was over, she ate a few more bites. Now she's also telling us that even if it's a few more bites, she's going to finish all of it. All of it. She's not sharing it with anybody. That's not something that Salah would want to eat or will eat. She basically lives alone. Ugh, I can't. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah, so again, here's the screenshot. Her, like, I, I don't want I don't want to see this. Goodbye. No, no, no. We're not going to see her eat. No, no. Nope. Nope. Entire, entire, I can't with this casserole dish. This is for the VD people. Because they're not going to come to Chantal's channel and be satisfied with just a regular plate full of food. Besides, if Chantal came on camera with a regular plate full of food, she could finish it in five minutes. Now, she wants something that takes a while to finish. So she can extend her video out longer. She could easily do that with commentary, with dialogue, and eat slower. But she's not going to do that. Like, she wants the shock factor. She wants all the feedies to go, wow, look at the size of that pot pie. That's enormous. That's great. Ugh. I can't. Absolutely can't. We got something else here. Ah, another one from Shenanigans. Thank you for posting, Shan. Let's watch. Uh, wait, wait, stop. Uh, Shenanigans says, so Chantal never told her last doctor that she has a B problem. She's so manipulative. This will only hurt herself. What is hurting herself? Look at her. She's sick. But let's watch anyway. That you liked it. Can you still eat chocolate on your health journey? No. Yeah, sure. No. No, you can't. No, if you are a diabetic on three different kinds of medications and you've got extremely high blood sugar and you got a problem with carbs and sugar, the answer is no. Stop spreading that misinformation. Cut it out. Absolutely not, madam. Stop lying. But just a little bit. No, but you don't know how to do a little bit. You don't know how. There's no such thing as a little bit with you. It's always too much whole basket of candy bars get out of here with that you know that's the thing 
that's the key. I think I know I have like diabetes, like my blood sugars have been consistently, uh, between 10 and 11, like no matter what, that's I still too high. Regular blood. You learned a lot of things in foodie verse. She's taken us down some roads and some rabbit holes that I'm like, I never thought that I'd have to learn about this because of Chantal, but I did. <laughs> you know? Regular blood sugar should be like five, six, seven. She's talking about her blood sugar is 10, 11. That's still entirely too high. But I eat, even if I eat healthy, so I'm not sure. I might need more medication. Like, I have then, no, you know what? I'm not a doctor. Maybe you do need more medication. But what's those pills going to do if you're over there jacking up your blood sugar with the carbs and the sugar, Chantal? There's only so much that pills can do. Come on. You think that more pills means you can eat more junk food? Is that the thinking? That's not logical. It isn't. I have to make a follow-up appointment and I'll let him know that. I'm keeping a food diary anyways. He probably won't approve of me eating chips. But I don't think I told him that I have an eating disorder. Of course you didn't. I know you didn't. You didn't go to your doctor and you, you weren't truthful with your doctor and said, I have this issue. I'm sure you also didn't tell your doctor that you've got a YouTube channel where you monetize your problem with food. I get you, I bet you let that part out too. You let a lot of stuff out. And guess what? Doctors, they run tests. They do the test on you and they can only do so much. But if you're truthful with your doctor and you say like, there are all these other issues going on then they can better prescribe the right treatment for you. Although we've seen the evidence, Chantal, you've gone to many doctors, many, and they all tell you the same things and you don't listen to a single one. So even if you told that doctor about your VED or anything, what can he do? There's not much he can do. Actually, and that completely cutting out everything is like so hard for me, you know? You don't even try. Look, Chantal, you may call reaction channels haters. You may say that we all don't like you. We wish you harm. We don't wish you harm. I haven't seen a single reaction channel saying, I want Chantal to D-I-E. We don't do that. But I'll tell you what I do see. I see you wanting some sort of end to your existence. Isn't that something? You accuse us of wishing for your demise. At the same time, you're putting forkfuls of food in your mouth that should not be there. You're wishing for your own demise. You are rushing towards it. You are your own worst enemy for your health. Yet you accuse us of something serious. At the same time, you're seriously hurting yourself. It makes no sense. You're, you're not interested in health. And stupid Salah over there, he's just going along with the program. Well, guess what, Salah? It's all fun and games until it's not. It's, it's not going to be fun anymore when she becomes bedbound, which is a high possibility, or she lands in the hospital. Then the fun's over, I guess. The party's over. Got to clean up the mess. We have litter train in Rome that you liked it. Ugh. Oh, so here, here's another clip from Shenanigans. Chantal confirming she hasn't gotten Julia fixed yet. No, Carl, not yet, because I'm not sure. Do you think it's mean? Like, do you think spaying is mean? Like, do you think that cats should get to have children? <laughs> I don't know, once or something. Chantal, you've got a female cat, not a male. Whenever a cat goes into estrus, it's very painful for them. So it's a kind thing to do. It is kind. I want like a whole bunch of kittens. I don't know. Well, don't have them. Your track record for taking care of pets is horrible. You you left behind two pets in Canada. You've got two pets in, in Kuwait that you barely take care of. Why do you need more? Why? What are you going to do? Let Julia get pregnant on purpose just so you have content for your channel? Wasn't that the thinking for Harry? You got Harry the hamster because you want to do like a hamster cam because you looked around and saw other channels that had hamster cams and you saw they were popular. That's why you got Harry. You want to use him for content. 
But notice the moment that you decided against the idea of hamster cam. He got put in the background. We barely see Harry anymore. We'll see Julia because she's out and about, but she's not being well taken care of. So how are you going to manage a whole litter of kittens? Don't do it. Okay, so that's it for everything on Twitter. Let's move on over to the, the live itself. Let's move on over. Yeah, I'm salty this morning. I don't care. Chantal can eat a bag of wieners for all I care. She really shouldn't be doing the content that she's doing. All right. So where are we? Where are we? Okay. So we're starting about 15 minutes in. We're, we're cutting out the portion where she's eating. I ain't seeing I'm I'm not watching it. No. Uh-uh. No reason to. She's boring the first 15 minutes anyway. Let's go. Sorry if I'm annoying you people with my eating chips, but. Oh, no. She's still eating. Sorry. Next. So you're still eating? Cut it out. No. Hello, Stephanie. Okay, enough eating. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, does anyone know how much, okay, Gabrielle, how many calories does a six inch cold cut trio have with a side of chips and a Kinza Cola? Why are you asking your subs about that? Look it up yourself. You might learn something. I mean, you're misknowledgeable over here with all the nutrition stuff, right? Dr. Armchair, Dr. Blue Couch, a.k.a. Dr. Beige Couch. If you're interested in your health, why wouldn't you look it up? Maybe it might shock you to learn how much you're putting in your mouth and how many calories you are consuming. Maybe by developing some self-awareness, you might slow all the way down. <sighs> I don't have anything cold. I don't. I did, forgot to stock my restock my fridge with cold water because I'm lazy. And now, so Cyber Six in the chat says, "What happened to the groceries?" Yeah, what happened? Three hundred dollars in groceries. What happened to them? What happened? Why are we back to eating the takeout already? Look, I live alone, like Chantal. But, $60, $70 worth in groceries last me for over a week before I buy another batch. Where's her food? <laughs> Why is it all gone? Oh, I don't have any cold water, so. Okay. I'm going to vape a little bit. Don't hate me. Mango. <laughs> uh, Blue Ridge, it's one thirty. Do I have pot pie left? Yes, I do. Probably not much. Although I will admit when I turn the camera off, I snuck a few more bites. I'm not going to lie. But I do have a, quite a bit left. So later I'll have some. Rachel Lee, who did you talk about? I didn't see your comment. Where? Who are you talking about? And, oh, T and Ash. I get it now. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to go to hell. So I shouldn't laugh at that. Italian sub. Me too. I crave it. Like, I want to do the 23 and me. I think I have some Italian in my blood. No, I don't. I think. No, you're not. You're French. Soro is a French name. What, what, what did I say it was? Okay. My, my, my mom's dad is French. My dad is like pure French. And the family tree on my dad's side had like relatives named. Nepal. By the way, can I just say this? Part of my heritage is French. I'm offended that she's French. <laughs> we don't claim you. Go away. On my mother's side, French. It, we don't claim you. Go away. Napoleon and stuff. So that's like pure French. So I'm French. And then my grandma, my mom's mom, Irish like really Irish. That's another one. I'm also Irish. We don't claim you either. We Irish people don't claim you. <laughs> no. So I'm French Irish, but I love Italian food so much. <laughs> Just because you love Italian food does not make you Italian. 
anybody in my audience, you have the, you know, like you are have it, Italian heritage. I guess we you get you can agree that you're Italian, you're Italian, but if you're not, you're not. And ma- eating Italian food does not make you Italian. <laughs> About calories, what? Girl, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I guess. You're going to get 700? Okay, but like, hey, hot tea. Yeah, a little up. Rachel, let me see. Oh, there's one message. No. Oh, Poppy. I don't see it. Look at her squinting at the chat. (laughs) That face. Oh, that's a good face. That is a good face. That's what I love about you, Chantal. Ma'am, you are so photogenic. You make great thumbnails, I must say. Like the screen captures sometimes are gold. Love it. I'm saving that for my thumbnail right there. By that face. (laughs) Hey, I just want to take your picture. Keep going. Sorry. You're going to have to say it again. I don't know why it's not showing. I'm (laughs) frerish. Your 23 and me was so disappointing. I'm like 98 pure whatever I am. What did they say? Tian says, you're 62% Italian. We don't have Jersey Mike's. We don't have Jimmy John's. This is Substop. So there is a, there are subways here, but there's also a place called like Substop. I'll show you. Oops. It's like its own thing. It's not like associated anymore with Subway. Stop talking, <laughs> stop talking about food. Move it along. Oh. Hi, Kathy Brown. Extreme beans. I'm moving her along. Bites of the pot pie, and there's like a whole piece of thigh there. But it was delicious, yeah. Shannon got deleted. Yeah. Julia, hello. I like the way you spell your name. Do they have cookies? Yeah. Hi, Sharon. They're pretty specific messages, (laughs) ma'am. Really? I don't know. 98% German? No way. 98%? Ashkenazi. Move along. Hi, Poncho. Should have shredded it more, yeah. So this right here going on right now, this is this is a toxic hamster wheel. It's a toxic cycle. So Chantal eats food. Then even on a live when she doesn't necessarily have to focus on food, she's still focused on it. She eats the, she's ate food in this live, which I'm not going to show. And then after eating the food, she's talking about food. And then people in her own chat, they start talking about food because she's talking about food. And if you have a problem with food, what's that going to do? It's going to put the thoughts of food right here in the front of your mind. You're thinking about it. You're imagining it. You think you start off talking about one food and in the back of your head, you're thinking about other foods you like, how it tasted, how much you want it, which is going to make you crave more food. The fact that she has a channel and her content is food and she gets paid to eat. It's just all the way around toxic, negative reinforcement. Sometimes to stop the wheel, you got to break the wheel completely. That's the only way it'll stop turning. I just baked them and then there was like a whole bunch of drippings on the bottom because like thighs have more. She could talk about anything else. She could do anything else. She could have her mukbang videos and then in a live do something completely different and branch out her content. It's the same anywhere you go. I remember when you had a YouTube, uh, YouTube, I'm sorry. When you, you had your Twitch channel, Foodie. Remember doing things on Twitch? You did that after YouTube yeeted your channel for a while. 
you bounce on over to Twitch and you got in their little partner program. But what did you do over there? You talked about food. It's the same content as it was on YouTube. There was nothing different. Nothing different. Always trying to bring the same boring content to whatever form you sign up for. Or fat, right? You're Sicilian, Italian? Nice. I know I should do 23 and me. How much is it? Because I'm not spending 200 bucks on this stuff. I don't care enough. <laughs> Irish and German. Casserole of races. Your dog's name is Poncho. They must make me purebred British. <laughs> yeah, I'm vaping right now. Rachel, um, no, I didn't. Maybe there's like, maybe. You know, I'm not diagnosing Chantal with anything. Okay, let's just make that clear. But I do think she's got an oral fixation. Like she's she's just gotten into such a habit of putting things in her mouth, doing things with her mouth. She's got to constantly be doing something with her mouth. So when she's not eating, she's smoking. You got to do get that oral fixation happening. Yeah, I have what, something that you're saying in a blocked word. So try another way to spell it, maybe. Hi, Sandy. What the heck, Lizzie? No way. <gasps> Yikes. Lynn, Swedish and Swiss. Wow. Nice. Imagine, Maggie. <clears throat> I do not smoke. That's how I live to be 500. <laughs> I'm, oh my gosh. Stuff a lot. You're vaping, vaping too? I don't do it often. I don't do it often. Yeah, that's another lie. So Chantal has gone back and forth about, she first she tells us on one that she doesn't like cigarettes. Then in a lie, she'll confess, yeah, I smoke cigarettes. So whenever she tells you, I don't vape that much. Yeah, you do. We haven't forgotten how you would get on camera smoking that annoying shisha the bubbling farting sounds that came out of it. And you do that for an hour straight. Smoking shisha, an hour's worth of smoking shisha is equal to 900 cigarettes. So are you going to sit there and try to tell me that someone who smokes that much, you're just barely vaping? I don't believe it. I don't. I'm not going to eat this often, or I'm going to try not to. Uh, the sub clause to the main clause. I'm not going to eat this often. Here's the fine print. You know, Chantal likes to say, I don't lie. And how she gets out of saying, like, how she gets around the truth is she puts the truth where she wants it to be. So saying to people, I don't eat this often. Okay, so you're saying that you don't eat the pot pie often, but it doesn't mean you don't eat other things often in copious amounts. So she could be telling the truth about that. I don't eat the pot pie often, but it doesn't mean there's back, there's not backup sandwiches and backup meals. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I was going to take every day I say I'm taking a break from going for a walk because when we go out, no Turkish, it's really, really like not a good time. So I don't think I would have like hardly anybody in the the chat if it was members only because nobody likes me. So I love it. She is so telling on herself in this live. I love this. I love all of this. She just said it. Chantal, I love how you're truthful without being truthful. Thank you. So she's got open chat. And why does she have open chat? Because she doesn't have many members left. So why would Chantal not have any members left? Maybe it's because the people that are paying their membership, they're looking at your content and saying, why exactly am I going to pay $5 for this crap? And I don't blame them. Like, what are they paying their money for? 
So I guess in your mind, if you don't have a certain number of members, you don't do members only chat. So you'll open up the chat and make it open swim. Anybody can come in because you're trying to attract new paying members. You want those extra views. You want as many people as possible talking to you. So if a lot of people have left the memberships, whose fault is that? Maybe also some of the Beezers are ticked off because you got a nasty habit of blocking people on purpose so that they have to re-sign up under another name and pay another $5 to talk to you. Basically try to squeeze five more dollars out of your members to where they're paying $10 versus five. And you don't even do any exclusive content for them. You don't sit down and do emojis. You don't do anything. You're lucky to be making the money on YouTube that you do with this lazy, boring, triggering nonsense. It's 119. Oh, frick that. I'm vaping too, Blue Ridge. <laughs> this is um, a rage tulip. This is mango, and it tastes like real, like mango ice cream. It's so good. And so it's not enough that she eats copious amounts of food. It's not enough that she overstuffs herself. She's going to smoke a vape that tastes like food. Can't get away from the food for a minute. Can't smoke a vape that has a mint flavor to it. It's It's got to taste like ice cream, which is going to lead to what? Her wanting ice cream, which is going to lead to what? Eating the ice cream. Do you, you guys see the toxic cycle here? Just food, 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 food. Got to be surrounded in food. Even if she's smoking, got to smoke something that tastes like food. Oh, I can't with her. Prompt you weigh in. I actually weighed myself like this morning. I mean, for those who are interested, listen, interesting thing about me or not interesting, depending on how you look at it. I won't even buy candles that smell sweet like vanilla or cupcake or anything like that, because I know if I burn that in the house, it's going to smell like like dessert. And I'm going to want to eat dessert just because I'm smelling it in the air. I even hate going to the grocery store. Like when you first walk in, you could smell the bakery and all the cupcakes, man. Like it, it takes all my willpower just to walk on. Don't look at it. Don't, don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look at the cupcakes. Don't look at it. <laughs> Got to get right past there. Because as soon as you walk in, you smell the sugar in the air. You know, like I'm aware of those things. I know, I'm aware of the triggers. She doesn't care. She knows what the trigger, triggers are and she goes right for them. And... I went up a very little bit. It was like 160 point something instead of 159, whatever. It's gonna, we love you. Thanks, Rachel. It's gonna fluctuate, you know? So. I don't know. I, I, this doesn't irritate my lungs. Is it real tobacco? The only thing that really irritates my lungs is cigarettes yeah but you smoke those instantly if i smell it second hand oh it's like if i if i even i mean inhale girl who are you talking to we remember when you were in thailand and you sat there and you lit up your cigarettes we remember we haven't forgotten with second hand like no <laughs> i love mango too i think it's like one of my favorite fruits i don't know because it's sweet my favorite vegetable is pickles, but the, like real vegetables that are not pickled, I would say broccoli, maybe. It's really bad for your lungs, like scented candles. Really? <clears throat> Still offers the members only. Yeah, I'm going to do some members only streams for sure. No, she's not. No, she's not. That's a lie right there. Members only streams. Didn't she just tell us a minute ago? That the reason why she's not doing uh, members only chat right now is because she doesn't have enough. And if Chantal's focus is to get as many views as possible out of whatever content she puts out, if she puts out a members only video or live chat, she's not going to get that many people, not enough to make her happy. So she lying. 
she's just saying that to her members so they think oh we're gonna get some good content y'all haven't figured it out yet she makes promises that she does not keep she should be doing some members only streams and content for y'all but she's not she wants the most views possible out of whatever she does she wants the reaction channels to react to her stuff so she gets further views or further attention or more subs or whatever she's not going to lock down her content for y'all nope i gotta think of more perks and like more badges and stuff i just you know what screw the perks screw the emojis how about doing quality content like real quality content that you think about interesting stuff very interesting stuff how about that i think people would be more happy with that than little emojis okay you're taking the lazy way out again you're walking all the way around what you should be doing haven't like i don't know it's hard for me to focus my mind is scattered you know fix it glycerin and flavoring oh taking meds for it to heal sour diesel oh so that's not tobacco one hour 20 minutes left 12 hours nice 12 hours i always found so long because after eight hours you're like ready to go <laughs> and by the way for those of you that are the beezers you know why she's doing lives again two reasons one because she wants to do that lazy content and get paid for it like she's not motivated two because those of you that are still members if she's not doing lives then you're going to look at yourselves and go why am i paying five dollars again like she's not even doing lives what's the point of paying my membership so she does the lives to keep the members on her channel and giving her that extra bonus money when you're like four more hours you can do it cigarettes and asbestos yeah oh rage i do here and there How many peppers are left? We should count them. I have, so here's the thing with the peppers. I actually had some peppers already in the fridge. I put cauliflower and potato salad like here. Really? Well, yeah, what about those vegetables? That produce does not stay good forever. Hey, Chantal, why don't you take us in the kitchen and show how much of the food is actually left? Like what you, give us an idea of what you've eaten so far. But those peppers and the cauliflower and stuff, it, after a while it goes to rot you should be eating that stuff first really it was gross but vaping yeah i see people like get like what is it popcorn lung or like they get really bad reaction like they get i've seen people in the hospital young people from the vaping but i don't do it like often seriously like this is the first time i've done it in like a long time so you're basically saying you don't vape as much. You smoke more cigarettes. Thanks for telling on yourself again. You going to wait up for your hubby? I work 72 hours a week. I used to like do that, Krista, because I liked the paychecks, honestly. When I was working, you know, I loved, like when I was working at StarTech, when I worked at the hospital, I was like salaried. So I, was I salaried? I think so. It was like a set amount. So I didn't like salary. I don't like it because I always ended up working more hours. Yeah, but that was a job that you got fired from because you weren't showing up to work. You were showing up late, taking long lunch breaks. You got fired from that job. Amongst other jobs you got fired from, you got a bad job history. Strain peas. <laughs> Freeze the peppers. Stuffed peppers. Mm, probably not. Sounds complicated. I'm afraid the rice will be hard. Oh, I guess I could cook the rice first. Stuffed peppers are hard? What? That's simple. I don't even know how to cook that. So what? Look it up. Oh my God. Y'all, if she wanted to eat healthy, this is so simple. She does nothing but scroll YouTube all day. You know, working. The only part of Chantal's body that gets a serious workout is her thumb and her finger just scrolling on her phone all day long. Scroll, scroll, scroll. That has to be the strongest, most limber part of her body, that, that scrolling finger. 
But if she wanted to know how to cook tasty meals, there's tons of recipes on YouTube, tons of them. There's places you can go on YouTube where you can find healthy alternatives to things you like. Like if you like brownies, there's a thing called uh, black bean brownies. Never tried them, but I'm interested if you happen to like rice, which Chantal's a big riceaholic. You can make cauliflower rice or cauliflower mash. By the way, I have had the cauliflower mash. Delicious. Like if, if you want to kind of trick your body into eating healthier, but your mind and your palate is looking for the same texture of something, like there's all kinds of switches you can do. If you normally drink whole milk, you can switch it down to say 1% or 2%. It's still milk. Or you can graduate after that to drinking something like say oat milk or almond milk, you know, just, just get your body used to something healthy that resembles something that might be not as healthy. You know, like just ease yourself down. She could do that. She's like, I don't know how to make this stuff. You can learn. There's videos with recipes right there in the description. They show you how to make it. And you can't get more, no more simple than that. What, you just add like meat and rice? Cooked rice? Gum job. <clears throat> yeah, Blue Ridge. I get that. Dehydrates my mouth. Yes, yeah. I'm always thirsty when I'm vaping too. But it doesn't taste like any cigarettes. I like that. Down to one job of going back to nursing school. Oh, wow. Oh, another interesting thing about those who are smokers. Sometimes when you smoke, it cuts your appetite. It does. Make, and coffee, that straight coffee, yeah. Caffeine cuts your appetite. Yeah. So there is a chance that if you smoke cigarettes, the nicotine, the caffeine, it cuts your appetite. It's a stimulant. Maybe that's another reason why she hates cigarettes. And whenever she drinks coffee, it's it's loaded with sugar. While working, you can do it, Krista, I'm sure. If you can work 72 hours, you can do it. It's going to be hard, but think of the payoff, you know? <clears throat> have you tried camel milk or cheese? No, Sister Sunshine, have you? Is it good? No sig stank. Yes, and in your house, no sig stank. Ma'am, what do you... Listen... I never smoked the shisha. I can't imagine that is not good to breathe in. I an hour long shisha session, how that makes your house smell. We're all going through the same things, vaping. Yeah, I have a, my problem, and this is the same way, the same reason why I eat things like this once in a while because I have a really hard time like raw dogging life. So what's that food going to do? How does that help you not raw dog life? How does that even help? It doesn't help. <laughs> the reason why I go overboard with food is because I don't want a raw dog life. Maybe you should learn to where you're not so dependent on food. That way if food is not there, you're not freaking out. What's so hard about life? I mean, life is not easy sometimes, but it's not that bad if you're on the right path and you're responsible and you know who you are and you know where you're going. It's not that hard. Life can be hard. You're gonna get your bumps in the road. Yeah, but like you're escaping through food. You're just saying, you're shutting the door on, on life and saying, go away. I don't wanna deal with you. I'm just gonna sit here on my couch and eat myself into the hospital. Well, guess what, Chantal? And I'm just gonna say it the way I'm feeling it. If you become bed bound and you require medical care, maybe even a medical staff to take care of you because taking care of a bariatric patient is a big job. 
a serious job and especially more so for a super, super morbidly obese patient. When you have a super, super morbidly obese patient, it takes more than one person just to move that person safely from one bed to another or get them out of bed. One person can't do it by themselves. They'll hurt their back. And if you are a super, super morbidly obese patient, that means you're going to have to have the correct setup either at the hospital or at home with a special bed and lifting bar and all that. And that's going to cost thousands. So you don't want a raw dog life, do you? Well, life's going to get really, really real if you end up in the hospital and you're surrounded by doctors and nurses and in a room and you can't get out of that room because you can't get out of bed. You're going to have to raw dog life then because you won't be able to get on your phone and get the food that you want. Like, you know what I mean? I always like feel like I need something to like soothe me through, through life, like vaping, shisha. This is the part where I get mad. I need something to soothe me through life. Chantal, please explain to me what about your life is so hard that you need to be soothed. What do you do all day that you need soothing? What troubles do you face? What tribulations? You're not someone going to a job outside your home, dealing with a boss, having to work long laborious hours, being on your feet all day, exhausting yourself. What? Why do you need soothing? I think your problem is you've got too much soothing going on and nothing to do. You've got nothing to distract your mind and occupy your mind. You're bored. And when you have a problem with food, boredom will make you eat. Oh yeah. Yep. You'll eat just because you're bored. Because your, your mind is looking for something to do and that's something to do in the moment. But why do you need the soothing? You do nothing all day. You go nowhere. You talk to no one. Why do you need soothing? You have your husband there. Allegedly, he loves you, cares about you, is devoted to you, although we know otherwise. Why do you need soothing? I don't see going off on walks as being anything stressful. Going to the mall is not stressful. What do you do? You sit at home and you edit your videos. That is not stressful. So why do you need all that over soothing? Meat feast subs, <laughs> cheese and onion chips. I don't know. It's bad. I know, but Pepper sandwiches. Oh, yeah. No. Pepper. Yeah, it's like a huge pepper. No. I've been an RN for 23 years. Don't recommend it. Can't wait to retire in six years. Really, Lynn? You have to really, I guess, love your job. I don't know. Shannon, what's your favorite sub? I could see cutting a, a green pepper in half like this way and stuffing it with like tuna. That sounds good. Tuna salad or chicken salad? Chicken salad, yeah. That would be good. Oh, wow, Gabriel. Okay, I want to point something out that I just find interesting. So this person, Lynn Pearson, says, I've been an RN for 23 years. Don't recommend it. Can't wait to retire in six years. Well, Lynn, my comment to you is twofold. First of all, thank you for the time that you spent being a nurse and helping people. But I'm also curious, Lynn, as a registered nurse, as someone in the medical field, with that training, how can you be someone that you are in Chantal's chat? Like you see what she's doing to herself. You see what this is and you are giving praise to her when you know more about health than she does. And another one, also I'm curious, so Gabriella Washburn says, nursing school is no joke. Hey, I believe that. It's serious training. I was in nursing school before I had cancer. I realized I'm out, not cut out for that kind of work. Yeah, it's, it's a big job. It's a very big job. I'm very sorry that you had cancer. I hope that you are in remission for that or in treatment for that, Gabrielle. But again, you're a nurse. How can you be someone that you went through nursing school? Again, you had the medical training and yet you're in Chantal's chat and you 
are a paying member and you see you're destroying your health. And there's an air of, I'm okay with that. How could anybody who's a medical professional that you've gone to school and you've got the training and you know more about health than she ever will be supporting of this behavior? I mean, she's an addict using YouTube as a funding platform for her addictions, depending on an audience to keep them going, whether it's financial or simply having a hug box to enable her either through word or a super chats. How, how can you do that? I mean, I'm just, I'm asking questions. I'm not attacking. I'm asking questions. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Helping not stopping. <laughs> so you guys are all nighttime beezers. Cheesesteak is so good, Lizzie. I know. But like from Subway, it's like not real. The beef is weird and gray. I don't know. You own a dispensary? Oh, that reaction. Someone says, I own a dispensary. Her eyes lit up. She's like, oh, you own a dispensary. Doesn't mean you're going to get anything from there. But just <laughs> still, she's telling on herself. I love this stream. She's telling on herself. So, miss, I can stay away from all this stuff. The moment she hears somebody has a dispensary, her eyes light up. Nice. So <laughs> I'll never be. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was my problem in Canada, too. Like, it was so easily accessible, you know? Early morning bees are hot. So she's blaming Canada. It's so easily accessible. Doesn't mean you have to go to dispensaries. You could have stayed away from them. Same thing with the fast food. You could have stayed away from that. You had your car. You can go anywhere you want. Why are you purposely going to the places where you should not be? Because you wanted to go there. And here's the issue, Chantal. You're putting off this air to your subscribers, members. You're painting this picture like Canada was a problem. You're saying, while I was in Canada, I had access to all of the naughty things. And because of that... And the fact that I have no self-control, uh, that's why I can't be there. But here's the problem. You are in Kuwait. And although there are no open dispensaries in Kuwait, it doesn't mean you still can't get to certain things. I'm sure there are things on the underground, the black market that, you know, if you know people or if someone you know knows someone, you can get to them. Even if that weren't true, your number one problem, the one thing that you're married to, food, you have access to and you still go nuts with. So staying away from Canada does not completely cut you off from your issues and make the issues better. It just means that you're going to lean heavily more on the one thing that you can get to. And so you have. Dice. Up the pepper and add the tuna mayo with some red onion. Yum. That sounds good. I know Subway bread smells good. Remember whenever people say it was gym mats? All this time, all, all this talking about food, all this talking about food. You know, the beezers can yell at me all they want. They can say whatever they like about me. I don't care. But I'm going to speak my thoughts. I think it's completely effed up anybody who claims to care about Chantal at all anyone who's not brand new like this day brand new who knows a little bit of her history that has seen her videos her talking about her diabetes talking about her issues with food it is effed up to come into her chat and mention food to her knowing that that is a problem for her even if Chantal starts the conversation and she starts talking about food, anybody who cares about her, don't take the bait. Don't lead into the conversation. Don't contribute to the conversation. Talk about anything else. Make anything else a topic. If you're someone that you would not approach someone who has a problem with, say, something illegal, knowing they had a problem with it or they do have a problem with it, walking up to them and talking about it 
It's going to make them think about it. It's going to make them do it. Why would you do that? If you wouldn't do that for that occasion, don't do it for this one. It's effed up. It's absolutely effed up. If you can, stay away from that subject. Talk about anything else. Talk about the weather. Talk about sports. Talk about stuff on YouTube. If you care, you will not keep her thoughts on food. You wake up at 4 a.m.? Yikes. Diet plates. A stuffed tomato with tuna salad or plain hamburger patty with cottage cheese. No! Actually, I, I love cottage cheese and I can't get it here. All this talk about, I'm sick of the talk of food. Can we move on? We are. Goodbye. <laughs> Dorothy Lynch dressing? What is that? Tess, I used to live in Kuwait. It's beautiful and peaceful there. One of my favorite places I ever lived. It is very peaceful here. That's what I like about it. It's not the same kind of stresses. Like, You know what makes her live chat so boring? She doesn't come to the table with things in mind to already talk about where she can fill up like 30, 40 minutes just on her conversation alone. She relies heavily upon people in chat to bring things up. And the one thing she'll always talk about is food. And then the audience talks about food because that's an approved subject. That is something they can talk about with Chantal and she won't have a problem. Anything else she might not be interested in, she might get angry over. So let's just talk about food for the next hour. <laughs> the only stress I feel here is like my own personal stresses. Which are, what are your stresses? Do you know what I'm saying? I get that. what she says she has personal stresses. What are they? What's going on that you're stressed out about? And yet there's no list of that. that. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. There's, I mean, there's, and there's a lot to do. Like, that's why, like, every, oh, yeah, I didn't finish my sentence earlier. Every day I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay home and like just relax, like, for one day. But no, I end up going out and walking for a few hours. So I'm going to. Really? I go out and I walk for a few hours. Okay. So if you walk for a few hours, if you are being truthful here, Chantal, if you're walking just that long, where's the proof? I don't see any proof. Do y'all see any proof? I don't see it. Hey, if she were walking and there were proof, she's really walking. I would praise her for it. I would say, good job, Chantal. You went out and you walked for an hour today. That's a lot for you. Or you walked for two hours. Good for you. I will praise honest, good work. I will praise honest, true self-improvement. I will praise someone being on the right path and doing the doggone thing. I will. But I don't see any proof. Her doing these vlogs, walking, not even walking at the mall, just strolling for like 10 feet and then stopping. Stopping to get coffee, stopping to pose, stopping to pose for pictures and do the eh thing. That's not honest exercise. Same thing with the park. She took every opportunity she could to stop and sit. Acting like a tour guide. Oh, look over here. Look over here. Look over here. I didn't see any hard work there. Hours worth of walking. Where's that footage? Each of those videos was 15 minutes. Where's the rest of it? Two hours? Okay. Um, so where's the hour and 45 minutes of walking? Because I, I have yet to witness it. I don't think you're walking for hours, Chantal, because if you did, your feet would be killing you. They would be so swollen. So if you're not getting on camera and saying, my feet hurt so much, my legs hurt so much, the muscles feel so tight, I they feel so stiff, you ain't doing nothing. You're not. You're a big old liar. Start up my Fitbit. Hmm. Do I want to go out today? I don't know. I have a lot around here I, need, I could do for sure that I've been procrastinating on. <clears throat> 
just like little projects. I want to do some sewing projects with my hijabs. I, I still haven't trans fully transferred all our wardrobe over to our new wardrobe. Oh, never ends. <laughs> Disney girly. I don't know. Healthy groceries in Ontario cost so much right now. I paid like four fifty five dollars for some cottage cheese. Really? Uh so Sister Sunshine says, what will you do when it gets boiling hot again? I've been asking that question. If she started to take walks, what is she going to do when it gets in the hundreds outside? Because that's what happened last year. How is she going to keep up this walking? The only way she's going to be able to do that is to get a treadmill, put it in her home. She can walk whenever she wants. And she doesn't have to worry about the heat. That, that would be a way to get it done. Just spend a couple hundred dollars on a treadmill, set it up, and get going. She could even do walking vlogs at home, and that way she wouldn't have to worry about people seeing her or feeling awkward or am I going to get in trouble for filming anybody. Some treadmill vlogs would be awesome. It would be content that she could make money off of, and it would be healthy. Ugh. We have ricotta cheese. I think it's expensive too. Gotta have celery and tuna with a little mayo squeeze of lemon. Yum, little nitty. I gotta try celery. Can we get a live weigh in? I just ate Subway. Of course, I'm gonna weigh a little more, probably. <laughs> Hi, Diego. Long time no see. When is your maid coming? No, I, I don't have a maid. She kicked the soccer ball. She don't need no doggone maid. I'm still on the fence. Hi, Fernanda. I feel like I, I can keep up with it now that, like, I'm feeling better and my stamina is improving. No, it ain't. My grandma would eat hers on sliced tomatoes and mixed peaches out in the whole container. <laughs> Hot tea. I love salt. I don't like sweet with my cottage cheese either. I like it savory. No, you don't. You copied straight from Amberlynn Reed. For some reason, you're looking at her content now and... Whatever Amber is doing, you want to do too. You're always looking for other people for ideas. You're constantly going on TikTok looking for anything that's trending or taken off. And you want a part of it, although you're not making your content interesting, which is weird. You want to follow the trends, but you're not willing to do interesting content to cash in on them. You know, strange. What will you do when it gets boiling hot again? Right. What are you going to do? I think we'll probably travel. To be honest. What's that going to do? That's one of the reasons we stayed so long in Thailand last time. It was like. I don't you know, I have to wonder if behind the scenes, behind the camera, Salah wants Chantal to at least lose some of the weight. So the next time they say go to Thailand, they won't have to pay for two seats for her. It'll be a bit cheaper. If he's trying to get her to lose at least some of that to where she can fit comfortably in one seat and it won't be such expensive travel. And by the way, Chantal, <laughs> um, all those lovely dispensaries in Thailand, they might be getting shut down soon. So if you go to Thailand looking for those green shops, you're in for a shock. They may not be there. I don't know. Honestly, the hotel life was nice. I miss sometimes I just crave hotel life like. Every day they would clean your room and it's just so nice to like come back to a nice, nice clean hat room. And I don't know, it was hot in Thailand though, but it was like also more just humid. It wasn't as hot as here. It was like 20 degrees less. Do a new cartoon. What should I do it on? Hello, Sigs and Lollies. So Maggie K says, I would love to go to Japan and see all the vending machines. Yeah, there's a vending machine life in Japan, but I would love to go to Japan. I told you all that. I would love to go to Japan. I think I think it'd be awesome, an awesome experience. I know that Japan is very expensive. Oh, it's very expensive, but I would be one of those respectful tourists. Very respectful of the people, of the culture, of the country. I would be that respectful guest in Japan's house. I would learn all I could about the manners, what is disrespectful, what is being respectful, try to learn some of the language. I would do my best to enjoy myself, but also give the best impression of me. Something that Chantal does not strive to do at all. 
You don't eat tuna or mayo? <laughs> I just bought a 16 ounce pack of cottage cheese for two. Where at Aldi? No, little Lauren. No made yet. I like celery with cheese whiz only. More food talk. She's talking about food. They're mentioning food to her. This is so wrong. Next. I used to put things on crackers when I was. Okay, more food talk. We're not doing that. Bye. Thing like cheap that we would get her. <laughs> so we had to keep. I had to spend more money on her food than mine at the time. So I ate a lot of like cheap junky things. And like, but usually it was just cheese slice on saltine crackers in the microwave. It was disgusting, but Ew. you know, chicken stew. <laughs> yeah, chicken stew. Now this high maintenance princess eats butchers. Butchers is the new chicken stew here. I miss my mom's microwave cheese. I love microwave cheese. Yeah, we know. It's uh, on a plate. Well, Olivia, I couldn't have, couldn't keep her to the end. I thought I was giving her to somebody who would take good care of her, but she did. You did give her to somebody that took care of her very well. Couldn't have ended up better. With all the medical care that BBJ needed and required, she went to the best possible place. Fate stepped in and said, "We're going to make sure she ends up with the best people in the best possible place." And the only reason why you're saying that she didn't end up with the best person is because a YouTuber exposed you big time. You got outsmarted and you've never been able to get over that. But it worked out very well for little BBJ. I'm so happy that she's happy, finally. And she's out of that. She went to the best possible person. Thank God, because you were not the best possible owner for her. Not by a long shot. Yeah. I couldn't fly her here. Oh, my God. I don't think she could survive that. <laughs> Honestly, you never wanted her. You had such disdain for BBJ because she was an older cat and because she was a female. You hate anything female. You treated her a lot different than you did Sam. You liked the fact that Sam was a male and he was a big chubby boy and you're a bigger woman. I guess you connected with that in some way. But you just had such hatred for little BBJ. It was so sad. But who knows? English person, what is ramen? Ramen is like, you know, okay, if you're English, it's Mr. Noodles or Itchy Ban. <laughs> Her name is Dolly. She only eats Sheba. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, Bibi, uh, Bibi Giel. She likes um, butchers. You want your butchers? I gave her butchers already. Oh, I have a funny Howie story for you. Why don't you ever show Howie? You claim to love Howie so much. Why don't you ever show that hamster? <clears throat> I feel so bad for Howie. She took got it from the pet store, and he's just basically been uh, quarantined inside of his cage, never to be brought out. So sad. Um. I, I'm sorry. I feel like I missed a whole bunch of people saying hi. Cavenders is the Cavenders. Oh, no name. Hi. New to your channel. Just wanted to say hello. Hi, no name. Well, welcome. <laughs> That's really nice of you to join up here. Uh, oh, there we go. I see, Rachel, your comment. It did get withheld. <laughs> Yeah, me. <laughs> Sorry, no name. <laughs> Good thing I went back. I know sometimes I miss people. That's why I go back sometimes to say hi. Hi, PMAC. Anyway, Howie. I'm talking about my hamster now, Howie. When, sometimes when I don't let him out, he throws a hissy fit, okay? And he'll run up at the st his little ramp and he'll start to... He'll tip over his food bowl. All right. So he did that this morning. <laughs> I caught him doing it. So I got to stop him, but he's so bad. He, oh, he, whenever he wants it, like sometimes he can't go out because like, if, you know, if, if I let him out, it has to be certain times when, you know, 
I'm going to be around and because he gets into everything, he hides under things and it's a big ordeal to get him out. So I didn't feel like dealing with that today. So, and he poops everywhere, poops everywhere. Hello, he's a hamster. And of course he wants to get into everything. He's a, basically, he's a wild animal. They're used to roaming around in the wild, not being put in a cage. He likes to stash his poop. I don't know. He's weird. So he like, he flips over his food dish. I got to get it on camera one of these days. That's the cutest thing, but he's a beezer. I don't know why he doesn't like his cage. There's a lot of air going through. Well, I saw the cage and it looked like a whole lot of everything in a tiny space cramped. You get so much crammed in there. There's no real like big amount of space for him. You need actually a bigger cage for him or take some of that stuff out. He's a poop machine. And he's especially not going to like if it's not been cleaned in a while. It's unhygienic and it probably smells if it's not been cleaned. Can you get Burger King chicken sandwich for dinner? <laughs> no, Gore World. I have leftover pot pie. It is 1.56. Oh, yeah. Pew Pew Tasha does good videos on a certain someone. Check her out. <laughs> I have a Russian blue cat. Her name is Texi. That is such a cute okay, next. healthy. So I'm not sure. I might need more medication. Like I have to make a follow-up appointment and I'll let him know that. I'm keeping a food diary anyways. So it's been like a while. That you talking to your doctor about the food problem should have been like the first thing because that is important. But let's just let's just not tell him that. Let's not tell him I got a problem with food. Let's not tell him I have a YouTube channel where I have an obsession with food and I profit off it. Let's 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 keep our mouths shut about that. They probably won't approve of me eating chips, but nope. I don't think I told him that I have an eating disorder. Actually, you probably did. And that completely cutting out everything is like so hard for me. You know, we have litter trained Rome free rabbits. Never, yeah, I can't. Dark, yes, you can have dark chocolate. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's good for you. Has very little sugar. Okay, Krista. I have to go do rounds. Yeah, I have to go back to the testing, uh, maybe on camera. A meet or greet. A meet or greet, Halusha? I've considered it. You mean in Kuwait? Okay, so this person, Maggie K, in the chat says, you can eat a candy bar, just not all at once. So you can process the sugar. Diabetic pro tip, LOL. You know, Maggie, maybe that might work for regular diabetics. I'm not sure. I've never been a diabetic. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But we're talking about Chantal. Not only is she a diabetic with dangerously high blood sugar to the point where she's got to take three different kinds of medication. But she's got a problem with food, which is severe. And... That's not a good idea for her at all because she will not just stop at one. If she eats one candy bar, one will become two, then three, then four, then five, and her blood sugar is going to spike all the way up. If you are an addict to anything, you're not just going to stop at one thing. You're going to keep going. Uh, what's that saying for those who might have had alcoholism or been alcoholics or maybe those of you in recovery then you know like one drink is too much and one drink is not enough you won't just stop at one that's why you can't do it at all because once you open that door it's going to stay open and there's a temptation to go overboard chantal should not be eating candy or fast food or fast food snacks or processed anything or carbs at all because those are all her trigger things, her trigger foods. The door gets opened and she just, you know, like cannonballs right through it. So no, it would not be a good idea for her. She's not a regular diabetic per se, in my opinion. You can eat a candy bar, just not all at once. No, so don't can... tell her that. Don't tell her that because she's going to take that as, oh, I can eat a candy bar. No, ma'am. No, 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 no. Yeah. Can I check my sugar right now? 
I also had a bit of cola though, so it's probably not going to be good. Oh Lord. So she, she just said, Oh, I had some soda, sugar water. Why? Gum job says your diabetes art gets more views. Just saying. It's not her diabetes arc. That's not why people are tuning in gum. It's because she's gone back to the feedy content. She's catering to that subset of people in your audience that they want to see her eat food. She's leaning back into that when she shouldn't. Trying to get some more views, although it's at the cost of her health, which she should not be doing. Yeah. Um, master escapologist. I didn't think about it, Haliusha in Kuwait, because I don't think a lot of Kuwait people watch me. <laughs> sugar alcohol, really? So is that like in fake sugars? It was given to me from my- You know, Chantal is so hyper-focused on the blood sugar and keeping it away from dangerous levels. She's so focused on that one small thing that she doesn't want to focus on the other things that might be going on inside of her, other things that might be dangerous. What about blocked arteries, Chantal? All that fat and cholesterol you're eating with the cheese and whatnot. What about blocked arteries? You do understand, ma'am, that arteries and veins are responsible for blood flow and some of them connect to your heart, which is important. You know, because if your heart stops pumping, you're not alive anymore. But so focused on manipulating her blood sugar through pills, keeping it just low enough so she can continue to eat the fast food. She's not thinking about how blocked her arteries might be, how that might lead to heart problems or say a heart attack or a stroke. There could be a myriad of things going on with her, but it's just that one thing she's focused on that matters because she wants to continue to eat her naughty foods. Chantal, my dad, he was not someone that had a problem with food, but he went through quadruple bypass heart surgery. That was pretty severe for him. Is that the road you want to go down? Really? I don't think you want to go there. My fiance lived in Texas. Sadly, he passed away during COVID. 2022. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. No name. I'm sure that your cat keeps you good company. Yeah, hi, Salah, wherever he is. <laughs> you like the morning lives? Yeah, I like that there's like an audience no matter what time it is, even, you know, but um, yeah. I wonder if the exercise, because normally if I would probably drink some cola, eat something like this, but I'm on, I'm taking my medication consistently. That does help. My blood sugars were norming like 23, like no less. That's than not normal. That is so not normal. When your blood sugar should be five or six and hers is 23 and she's like, that's okay. No, it ain't. No, it's not. And Chantal, don't think I don't know what you're doing. You're doing the false reward system. You think if you go out and you walk for two minutes in your head, that bee monster in your head, that false voice that you keep listening to, that bee monster, that manipulative voice says to you, oh, you went out and you walked for two minutes. Go ahead and have 5,000 calories. It's okay. That little bit of walking balances out the calories. It cancels them all out. No, it don't. No, it don't. So you do a little bit of walking, but then you turn around and you eat copious amounts of fast food, probably more than you normally eat because you think you've done good. You've done something. Well, the walking does do something. It helps just a teeny tiny bit. But once you eat 5,000, 6,000 calories, you cancel out whatever good you just did than 16, 15. So they're going down a bit, like the 10 to 11 is an improvement. It's still too high. Yeah. I'd like to get it down to like, yeah, even nothing perfect for now, just seven or eight would be nice. 
you could get it down that low if you stop eating all the junk decrease your carbs by a lot the rice the sugary drinks if you went without all that it would go down by a lot more and the pills would not have to work so hard but i wonder if the exercise is helping keep it down a bit too she's a love yeah cats are amazing maybe yeah but mine is nowhere to be seen No, I'm not purposely not saying his name. Salah. Yes, you are. <laughs> you are purposely not saying his name. You are purposely not showing him on camera. He's keeping himself away from the camera. He's been shamed off of YouTube and he will continue to be shamed because although you are running deflection for him, although you are trying to uh, act like nothing's wrong and maybe you've got some thoughts that at some point he can return, he cannot. Because the comments about those messages will never stop. The jokes about his interests will never stop. We will never forget. We'll never let you or him forget. He can kiss that gaming channel goodbye. That couple's channel also goodbye. He's going to have no presence on YouTube. Not as long as Girl World is around. And I love that for him. And you too. I don't mind saying the same. <laughs> My husband, I don't know. 10 is so high, I know. But when it's usually 23, you could see how that's an improvement for me, you know? Okay, I can go outside by myself for sure. It's just boring by myself, Turkish, you know? I don't know. So Blue Ridge Bunny says, but how do you feel? Are you feeling better? You sound better, happier. You know why she's happy? Blue Ridge, because she's in the zone. Honestly, like she's doing the content that she wants to do. She's able to eat copious amounts of fast food. That is her happy place. That's why she's happier. She's not having to get on camera and eat diet meals or prepared healthy meals or decrease her portions. She's just thrown caution to the wind. And saying i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna go for it she's in the happy zone that's why she's doing that she's doing this thing that's why not because she's doing better but because she's doing the content that she honestly wants to do and the toxic feeders are on her channel supporting her <sighs> no carl not yet because i'm not sure you think it's mean like you think spaying is mean no like do you think that cats should get to have children <laughs> not all of them no <laughs> i don't know once or something i want like a whole bunch of kittens no i don't know you may want it but you don't need it you can't take care of yourself you don't know how to take care of the animal that you have if, if something happened to Julia while she was pregnant, if she was uh, miscarrying or there's some kind of medical emergency, are you going to take her to the vet to make sure that nothing happens to her or her babies? No. Are you going to go on vet visits to get the ultrasound to see how many kittens are there and if they're developing healthy? No, you're not. You're not going to do anything. So don't even entertain that thought in your mind. You, you enjoyed his garlic bread. Yeah, they are pretty funny. <laughs> Thanks, bud, baby. I just wanted to show you some much deserved. Ah, so Gumjob is coming through saying there are health benefits to spaying, cancer reduction. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. So there you go. It's not a mean thing to do. Kindness. Thank you, no name. I appreciate it. Kindness is good. He's here, Disney. He's busy with something in the other room. There are health benefits to spay and cancer reduction. Yeah. Do we have enough cats in the world? So Rachel Lee says, I don't know because we have enough cats in the world that nobody is taking care of, unfortunately. Right, like if somebody wants a kitten, why not adopt? Go to a shelter 
there are kittens there, there are cats, there are dogs that need a home. Why not do that first rather than allow a pet to become pregnant? If you can help it, unless you're a breeder or something. Taking care of it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes cats only have one kitten. <laughs> Sometimes. I don't know. Aww. First litters tend to be small. Took us outside and did a live. <laughs> the posing with the ghastly music. You don't like my sh my vlogs? Because there's another one coming out with a lot of posing. <laughs> what is he? Taylor, one of my cats in a tiny abaya. If you check our couples channel, Sister Sunshine, we have a lot of, we go to a lot of museums and stuff. You should do a live walk one day. Maybe I can do one every day down by the beach or something. I don't know. Guys, so long as he's still where he always is. I mean, he's with me, but just not on camera. That's why you guys are probably wondering. Good night. No, I hate the music and all the posing, but we'll watch and hate anyway. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Aha, so Turkish Coffee says, I talk about her, her video. I hate the music and all the posing. <laughs> VIBs coming through. At least that one for that moment. They're, they're calling it. And she's laughing because she knows that they're telling the truth. It's just a bunch of music, filler footage, imposing. No true exercise. Even your VIBs are calling you on the carpet for that one, Chantal. <laughs> you don't understand Turkish coffee. If you don't put music, it's even worse. Why? It's a 15-minute video. It's so easy to fill up 15 minutes worth of footage if you're talking. There could be dialogue. Like you heard, Solid doesn't have to say a word. Just talk to the camera like you're doing these life logs and you should have this feeling that whoever's watching you, it's like they're right there next to you and you're talking to them in a personal way. You're talking to the camera like you talk to somebody walking beside you. You don't do that because you're lazy. You want to just put in a bunch of boring driving filler footage or mall footage or whatever footage and not talk through it. You could tell people how you're feeling, how you're doing. If you're walking like, you know, like, hey, guys, like I'm, I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm starting to feel a little bit out of breath, but I'm going to keep walking. You know, talk to the camera and let that be your motivation to keep going. Kind of use the camera to distract you from being a bit uncomfortable so you can keep going. You don't do that. Just watching me huff and puff and like, I don't know. I want to share that I've been married for 18 years. We had a wobble too, but we, the love outweighs the anger, which will pass. I promise. Uh, you had more than a wobble. Salah talking to another woman and saying the things that he was saying and trying to set up a deal. He was looking for another mark, asking about Kybella's salary, how much she made, how many subscribers she had. Uh, he was looking for someone to replace you. That's more than a wobble. He even told Kybella that her butt was more important than his family. That's more than a wobble. <laughs> much more than a wobble that's a full that's full tilt yeah thanks bad baby that's encouraging yeah yeah you know that's the thing you gotta weigh it you know we haven't been though bring us to the to one on a live okay i will for sure i will for sure give him our best i will for sure we do we here she is she got, oh, what are you doing? She got out of her box to come here, flopped herself on the ground and went back to sleep. You're so cute. Oh, yes, you are. Cat deflection. Puff and doing nothing. Oh, well, that's good to know. I was with a guy for 18 years. Ah, I like this comment. Rachel Lay says, huff and puff. 
means you're doing the work to lose the weight. I'd rather see you huff and puff than do nothing, Chantal. Health over gain. Right, right, right. So her viewers are saying, it's okay if you get on camera, you're sweating buckets and you're huffing and puffing. That's authentic. That's original. That is true to form. That is honest. They, they want to see you put in the work. They don't want to see you talking about the work. They want to see the work. And yet you don't want to show it because you're not really doing it. But the people that are in your audience, they want to see you get better. They're saying, we don't mind the huffing and puffing. We don't mind at all. Show it to us. Be authentic about it. Stop lying about it. And I heard his eyes go two different directions now. <laughs> what? Thank you, No Name. Thanks for joining. Stop cat deflection. We need to know you're okay. I am okay. I will. Gore World, I'll uh, film it tomorrow for you guys or do it live. How about that? I'll do a live get ready with me, maybe. <laughs> What's that got to do with her health? A get ready with me. How, how does that play into helping her health out? putting on makeup and all that. How does that work? No, I don't think, I think my blood would have gone up because I'm, ew, it's kind of sweet because I'm beezing kind of. And here's the funny thing about that. So you're all about beezing. Beezing is misbehaving. So you're misbehaving right now. When you get in a hospital, Chantal, and you are pushing yourself in that direction, how are you going to bees then? You're not going to be able to. You're going to go from beesing to not being able to bees. If you become bed bound or house bound and someone has to take care of you, how are you going to bees? <laughs> You're going to have eyes on you. What are you doing? She's so ridiculous. You have to see her, okay? What are you doing? What are you doing? Cat deflection. And nothing against Julia. She's a very pretty girl. She's a very pretty girl. I wish I could just go over there and scoop her up and take her to my house and take care of her, although Booger would have a fit. <laughs> I love Booger, but Booger is very possessive of her mama. And she, she doesn't play well with others that way. <laughs> She just doesn't play well with others. She she wants all my attention, but still like the the the, the cat lover in me. I want to I want to make sure she's taken care of, and I know Chantal ain't doing it. Hey, booger. Speaking of which, hi baby, come here. Cat deflection moment over here. This is my baby. Look at the big chunky girl. This is my baby. Hi. But I really do wish that someone would take Julia in and take care of her. I know Chantal's not doing it. She's not, she's not getting her fix, which means she's going to go into heat maybe what every two, like every month or every two or three months, depending on her and the season. Uh, like she's, and that's uncomfortable not being brushed. Uh, it's just, it's not having her nails clipped. I feel bad for her. Look at her back feet, everybody. Thanks, Jenny. She looks like she needs brushed. I mean, look at her fur on the underside of her belly. Like you, right here, this little patch in the middle. It looks matted. Rachel, you can message me. Um, do you have TikTok? My messages. So I got to think of what I want to do today. You should play Stardew Valley. No. <laughs> you stay out of Stardew Valley, although I would never see you. Don't you play my game. Don't you play Stardew Valley. <laughs> Stop it. Get away from my game. It's too good for you. I don't have the attention span to play anything these days. Good. Don't play Stardew. I like Stardew. Don't ruin it for me. That's how I relax off of YouTube. Or read. But wait a minute. Hold on. Didn't you tell us about the books that you read? About B moments and 
things related to bee moments and nutrition. So, Miss, I don't have time to read, although I disagree. I think you got plenty of time. You just rather read YouTube than books. But you're so full of knowledge, Chantal. You're constantly reading and searching out information for your health. How is it you're searching out this information if you don't read? Hmm. Interesting tidbit there. I had a dream that I was shopping at a bookstore and some person bought a book. I love bookstores. I love libraries. I'm weird. Am I weird? I'm kind of a nerd, quiet person. I love bookstores. I especially like the, the bookstores, not like Barnes and Noble, love you, but I love those little hole in the wall nobody really knows about it bookstores that are full of all kinds of books i just like to go browsing for hours and see what i can find love it some chicks may get excited over say uh, jewelry or expensive shoes and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your jam more power to you i'm a nerd you take me to a bookstore or a thrift store i'm happy i'm like a kid in a candy store woohoo or anything around computers or video games, I'm there. I know, I'm weird. And I bought the same book. Boring dream, I know. Hey, Squeaky Frog. I'm completely okay with used books. Books are one of those things that it doesn't matter if it's new or used, it all reads the same. So I'm all about that used book life. I'll take it if it's used. I can still read it and enjoy it. Um, how did you get banned? I did nothing. Absolute rubbish. We never heard anything. We never saw anything of that sort. Oh, good night, Millie. What ban is Blue Ridge talking about? Like when YouTube banned her? Is she talking about that? When she got the YouTube ban? She got banned for many things. First of all, she breaks terms of service all the time. She's broken them numerous times. I don't know exactly why YouTube basically threw the ban hammer at her. But if you're talking about her losing her channel the first time, I think it had to do with Omegle. Her going on Omegle and showing, let's just say, very, very young men. You know, her coming on camera and in her lingerie, which was inappropriate, and looking at very, very young people. And one happened to flash himself on live. She freaked out and she shut off the computer, but still, she's always breaking TOS. Her channel honestly should have been gone by now. Get a bus and go out by yourself. Go to the cinema and treat yourself. Go on the bus? What? I'm afraid of I don't know. I don't know what the K bus is like here. Oh, Rachel, I see you just. She would never get on a bus. Being surrounded by people, tight space, can't do it. Followed me. Good. Yeah, you can message me on there. Become a booktuber. Start a Beezer book club. We can read this. Did you guys, what books did you read when you were a kid? And then I'm going to go. I mean, when you're growing up. My favorites was Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps. Okay. Sounds like she's winding down. We got like two minutes left. I think we've seen enough. Don't you guys agree? I think we've seen enough. That, that's all we need to see. So I would like to end this react by thanking all of you for being here with me. I certainly do appreciate it. And please remember that uh, to go over to Life in Vibes channel and check her out her content if you'd like and give her a sub and, and a comment if you wish, because I did react to part of her content today as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this react. Again, if you happen to like what I do, you appreciate it or you want to see more of it, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to go look at her whatever life log and, and see what to do about it. And I'll see you guys in a bit. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other.